Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are all have a blessed day. Mine's going really good. Hey, uh, we've had a couple of questions about the term sons of God. Uh, I bring it up all the time uh, when we discuss the Nephilim because, uh, you know, it only appears five times in the Bible. And it appears in Genesis 6 2. That's the one that concerns the Nephilim. It says that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all that they chose. So that's the first place that term sons of God comes in play. And then three times in the book of Job. And one of them says in Job 1.6, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan was among them. Well that right there is clearly angels. And then once in the book of Daniel. Daniel 3.25 he answered and said, Lo, I see four men. Remember they threw, they threw Shadmach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. And the king comes up and he says, Lo, I see four men walking amidst the flames, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So there's five times that it appears in the Bible, in the Old Testament. These are the only beings that are sons of God in the Old Testament. All the angelic host, all the angelic host, both good angels and fallen angels, they are all a direct creation of God. They are all Elohim sons of God. The only other one is Adam. Adam was a direct creation of God. He is therefore a son of God. And Eve, of course, came from Adam. However, all that changed when Jesus rose from the dead. When Jesus rose from the dead and someone believes in him and becomes born again, then we all become sons and daughters of God. 1 John 3, 1 to 3, this is what it says. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. So listen, recap. In the Old Testament, the only sons of God were all the angels, both fallen and the good angels, and Adam, all direct creations of God. We are the sons and daughters of Adam, unless you're born again. When you're born again, that is a, you become a new creature, and you get the title, sons of God. Now, when you look at that scripture, there's something that's in there. And it says, every man that has this hope, the hope of seeing the Lord Jesus come as he is and us being translated to meet him, has this hope in him. He purifies himself even as he is pure. There's a response that comes from being a child of God, a son of God or daughter. There's a response, an automatic response that comes when that happens. And that is you are to purify yourself even as he is pure. Well, Pastor Bob, how do we do that? We all sin every day. That's a fact, we do. And our being a child of God, a son of God, that's our standing. That's not our behavior. But listen. This is how you know that you're getting that purification correct. Today, 
Are you walking closer to God today than you did yesterday? Will you be walking closer to God tomorrow than you are today? Are you making daily progress? People listen. That term backslidden, I don't like that term because it's not true. You know what backslidden means? Backslidden means that the demonic host has come upon you and they are just literally kicking the crap out of you in every aspect Spect of your life. They got you down and they are literally just kicking the crap out of you. That's what backslidden is. The demonic host is having their way with you. And what you do when that happens, whatever they brought into your life that's allowing them to do that, you get rid of it. You say, okay, no, I've had enough of this. Lord, please help me. Lord, pick me back up, dust me off. Help me, Lord, to get back on that path. He'll do it. He'll do it. To purify yourself means to take an inventory, say this, this, and this does not belong in my life. You need to be better tomorrow than you are today. Look at 1 Peter 1-5. I want you to grasp this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. People, we have an inheritance. You know how much money Elon Musk has? You know how much money the Rockefellers have? You know how much money George Soros has? All these people? Compared to you and the wealth you're going to have in heaven, they don't have anything. They don't have anything. Paul says you can't even imagine the amount of wealth that is waiting for you. People, I've told you this before. Eternity past. It's eternity. You can never get to the end of it. God has been creating that whole time. Every single thing that God has ever created in eternity past, everything He will ever create in eternity future, all that is yours. It's all your inheritance to enjoy. Every single born-again believer, every being that is in heaven, time past and time to come, every being is there for you to enjoy. We can't even fathom what God has prepared for us. He said it's incorruptible. That means it will never change. It's undefiled. That means it's, it's totally pure. It's yours. There, there's nothing, nothing evil about it. It's all undefiled. It's yours. And you know what else it says? It fades not away. You know how many people hit the lottery for a million, two million bucks and they're broke in a year? It happens all the time. Not here, not in heaven. That inheritance will never fade away. You'll be just as rich in a several trillion years as you are the day you get there. You'll never be able to spend it all. People, listen. Elohim, sons of God, you and I, every born-again believer, we are the sons and daughters of God. We possess everything. We absolutely possess everything. In the end, we win and they lose. We move on into eternity. 
they move on into a lake of fire. People listen to me. Fear not. Because God has you in the palm of his hand. Fear not. People listen. You got this. You got this. If the demonic host has been kicking the crap out of you, get up, dust yourself off, and move on. You got this. Anyhow, listen, I just want to give you something to think about. Heaven or hell, you choose. Just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.